In this episode, we finally get to scarfing up the planks, but first, we install one more strengthening detail to the hull, diagonal bronze strapping. Rabbit's all fared out, the stop waters are in, and our next big task is to put in the diagonal hull strapping. Once the hull strapping is in and situated, we can go on to planking, which will be the next huge step in building Arabella, uh, and we're really anxious to do that. Uh, so let's explain what diagonal strapping is and why that's important, and I think it's just going to be easier to do that in front of the plans. So let's head over there and uh, check that out. So we're going to look at this image down here, since there's not a lot going on. Uh, I'm going to show you where the hull strapping goes and what it does. What essentially we're going to do is take the bronze strapping and make three X's on the hull. One at each of the masts and one in the center over the ballast keel. So they'll look something like this. So these are by no means exactly perfect and exactly where they're going to be. But they kind of paint the picture of what we're going for here. So the straps are going to go from down along the keel timber in the center line all the way up to the shear and they're going to tie that together and they're going to be connected to every frame that they go across. So when we put the planking on, the planking fasteners will go right through the plank, through the diagonal strapping, and through the frames, tying all of that together. And it's basically going to add a ton of rigidity to the boat and, and add a lot of that torsional rigidity. So for anyone who's ever built a house, done any sort of stick framing, you put the walls up and everything's kind of loosey-goosey and you can move it around, it's not very strong. And then you put on the sheathing, the plywood, the sheetrock, whatever, and all of a sudden it becomes a lot more stiff and a lot more rigid. And this bronze strapping is basically doing that for our hull. Since the Carvel planking are long strips that go fore and aft and they're not tied together beyond the frames, that whole system can rack and move a little bit over time. And by adding these bronze strappings, we create all of these little triangles throughout the hull where they're connected to the frames. And triangles, if we go back to geometry from middle school or high school, are one of the more stable and rigid shapes. Uh, so it's a lot harder to crush or deform a triangle than it is a, a square or anything else. So by adding all of these diagonal strappings, we're basically making a whole bunch of triangles down the boat. And we're making so that if any part of the boat wants to rack or twist or hog, it's going to be fighting those straps and they're tied to everything else. It should go a really, really long way towards making the boat a lot stronger and a lot more longer lived. So before we get any of these straps in place, uh, we've been kind of trying to figure out how to get them in there. Basically what needs to happen is the straps need to go behind the ribbons but on top of the frames, so squished in between here. And basically we've realized that it's going to be a little bit difficult to kind of snake them in there. So we've come to the realization that if we clamp all these frames to the shear batten up there, we can then take off all the ribbons that are below that and just place the diagonal strapping in place, uh, which will make it so much easier. And then afterwards, we can put these back in place and we can actually put them to places that are strategically beneficial for us. So right now, this one is on a diagonal line but it might be better for us to actually put it at where the water line is here. And then we can kind of use that to line off later down the road. With the lower ribbons out of the way, we started with the bronze straps, bending and clamping them into place. We needed to have all of them up to make sure that they were landing right before we made any final decisions. That's better. 
Okay, and then we're just gonna have to move this one over as well so that the X, so that they overlap right in here somewhere. Since the longest available length of bronze strapping was 10 feet, we were a little limited with how we could place them. Uh, a little bit. But we don't have the length to do it. We weren't able to get the recommended 90 degree angle cross, but these should still be very effective in strengthening Arabella's hull and providing future peace of mind for our planned adventures. We can mark, we can mark, we can move, we can route, we sh can shellac and move on down to the next one. Yeah. And just have them all clamped up and out of the way a little bit. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And if we just do them all one at a time, none of them will move anywhere. No, and if we leave the shear clamped, lining them back up we should be a piece of cake. Mark those right now ahead of time and just in case they do move. Yeah. Pretty happy with where the bronze straps are. It would be nice if they were a little bit longer, but the 10 foot length is the longest that we could find, and it will suffice. Um, so the next step is to inlay them into the backbone here and into the frames so that when we put the planks on, everything sits flush. So you have this one clamped really tightly. We're also going to have to let it into the mold here so that doesn't cause a lump. Uh, but we're going to mark it, and then we have a little palm router and a jig here. So where we can fit the jig, we'll clamp the jig, and then we just zip around it with the router really easily. And where we can't fit the jig, uh, we'll just set this shallower, and we'll just have to do it by hand with the router and go as carefully as we can and carve that out and do any finish up with the chisel and get that so that the bronze will inlay neatly into the frame and inlay into the rabbit. And we're gonna do that up the boat a little bit, but we're not gonna do all of them because the bent frames, one of the nice things about them as we go forward is they still have a little give and flex to them. So we can pull them in, out, push them up, down a little bit to make sure everything's fair as we put the planks on. So if we cut all of the notches for the bronze strap all the way up the boat and we adjust those frames, even a quarter of an inch, the notches are gonna be off. So we're just gonna do the lower bit here where the first couple planks are and where the bronze floors are and where everything isn't gonna move and we'll continue cutting these notches as we get planks on and we'll just do it a couple jumps ahead of the planks where we have enough room to pull the bronze back and get in there and work because it would be a little risky if we cut them all right now.
I needed this because I need something to. Yeah. I was gonna fall in the middle. But that should be easy to clean out, and we just gotta clean up the corners here. It's getting a little bit later in the day. Uh, we got most of the starboard side cut, but we're both getting a little bit tired, so we decided we're gonna finish this up tomorrow before we make any mistakes. But uh, everything's looking really good, and all the straps seem like they're gonna fit pretty well. So tomorrow we're gonna finish on the port side and see about fitting all those straps in there. We went through with the uh, trim router and the chisel and a couple planes, and we got the pockets cut here where the diagonal strapping is going to nestle into the back of it and we also notched some of the frames where it's going to cross those. So now that they're all notched out we got to go through and just do a rough test fit and make sure that all of the bronze fits in there nice and neatly and if it doesn't we just trim it and make sure that all of that's good and then we can give it a couple coats of shellac and some anti-fouling paint and then we'll be ready to fasten in the bronze straps permanently. Although we had an early start, it was around 1 p.m. before we got done with the dry fit and tweaking on the port side. We went through and cleared all the wood chips before applying shellac on all the rebates we had cut. Once that dried, we put on a coat of anti-fouling paint and Steve drilled and countersunk the holes at the end of all the straps. The time has come to take these big old chunks of oak and mill them down to size so that they can become some garboard planks. Previously with Randy's help we dragged all these out of the pile and went through with a tape measure and made sure that we could get a 12 inch wide garboard out of them. And some of them we can get a 12 inch wide plank and a 6 inch wide plank. These are some pretty big beams. So we delineated already whether they were going to be 6 inches or 12 inches and how best to use them. Now we got to take the big old Sasquatch and just rip them down to size. And we're more or less just going to split them down the middle for a lot of them. Uh, some of them have some pith in the center or they checked a little bit in the center and we're going to try to follow those natural weaknesses and get rid of them. But basically we just need to get these down to a manageable size so we can go and put them through the thickness planer and then resaw them on the bandsaw and get them down to the proper size for the garbage planks. Because right now they are way too thick and they are way too wide. And since our thickness planer is only 15 inches, uh, we're going to have to cut these down because a lot of these are over 30.
We got the garboard planks knocked down to width, and now we need to bring them down to thickness. And when we saw milled, we milled everything to really the largest thickness which we would need, which is about two and seven eighths, so that we could plane it down to two and a half for deck beams and framing and that kind of thing. But the garboards are a lot thinner, so we need to take almost an inch and a half off these planks which we could stand them up and run them vertically through the bandsaw, but we have to try to control that, and that's gonna be funny. Uh, or we could run them through the thickness planer and turn an inch and a half of beautiful oak into sawdust, which we don't really wanna do. So there's a sawmill a handful of miles up the road, and it's the place where you gotta bring the logs to them. Uh, that's why we've never bothered going. It was easier for us to bring the mill here. But we just gave them a call and asked if they'd be willing to resaw these four garboard planks for us so that uh, it would take a couple hours on the bandsaw here, it's gonna take him 10 minutes. So we're gonna throw him in the truck, take a ride down the road, go meet those guys, stick a couple bucks in their pockets, and come back with some uh, oak planks that are much closer to garboard size. Definitely want to give a big shout out to Bear Creek Mill for making the time for us to come over on such short notice and for helping us get these boards down to the right thickness much faster than any of our other options. planing down the oak for the garbirds and we found a bullet. So this is actually the second bullet we found. The first one is upstairs somewhere in the um, staging of the second floor. That came out of a big pine tree. And this is the first bullet that we found in the boat wood. Here you go. That to me looks like a piece of buckshot. So thankfully the bullet is just lead, so it won't really bother the oak. It's not like the oak's gonna have iron sickness from it or anything like that. So we just popped it out, we'll finish planing it up. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll put a fastener right there and we won't even have to do anything with it. Um, but if we don't end up drilling it out for a fastener and we don't end up planing it out as we thickness them here, we can just bung it later. It's not really a big deal. It's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, more of the novelty factor of somebody I don't know, probably a hundred years ago or more, shot at something with buckshot and hit this oak tree, and now we are finding the BB. So we'll throw it in the scrap lead bin, and who knows, maybe it'll end up in the rudder or something, because we've got to do a little more lead work later on for that. There's a weight in the bottom of the rudder, and I don't know, maybe we'll add this to that. Planning all these boards makes an impressive amount of sawdust, and today's load will mulch the walkways for the garden. Hopefully this doesn't cause too much of a fire hazard. So I think this is how we want to scarf them up. So this plank would get scarfed here and would stand up and in. And there's a little bit of funkiness on that forward edge would get cut off where it starts to churn up the stem. And same with this one, it would go in up and in like that. And then there's a narrower part down that end that would get trimmed off when you went into the stem as well. So next is to see if we can uh, get these into the scarfing jig and get a bunch of 12 to one tapers put on them.
After roughing out the scarves with the skill saw and knocking out the kerfs, we found that taking it right down with the power planer as far as we dared before actually using the jig made things much faster and much easier. Well, we've got one of the scarf joints done and ready to be glued, and we've got two more that are close, and two more that still need to be cut. Uh, so it's 4.30 now, and Thad's supposed to come tomorrow afternoon to help us get ready to hang some planks and start getting these marked. So we're going to uh, get some pizza, throw on some time lapse, and just try to hammer this out and see if we can get these glued so that by tomorrow afternoon we'll be able to unclamp them and start transferring some measurements and stuff. Maybe not bending them and putting them on the boat, but having them stable enough that we can start to work with them. Another reason we're gonna push to get these glued up tonight is that once they're glued, we can safely put a coat of oil on the outside. And since these came out of some pretty thick timbers and we just resawed them yesterday and planed them much today, and it's fairly dry out even though it's raining, <laughs> We really don't want them to warp or check or split or do anything funny overnight. So the faster we can get them glued up, the faster we can get a coat of oil on them and the less chance we have of them misbehaving. Uh, so I'm gonna try to get this done so that the planks behave. have to get on this thing, flip it on here, slide it around until we're happy with it, get a couple clamps on the side of it to hold it, and then this guy will go over the seam, we'll clamp that really well, and then just throw a few more on there until we get good squeeze out, but we're probably going to have to mostly use the bar clamps and put them facing down. Mm -hmm. Then when this one's done, just jump up there. And then we can oil the tops of those, lay out the blocks, and get the next round ready. Sounds good. And the next one will just be one scarf, so it'll be a little bit easier. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Bachelor Street. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, yep, right about there. Okay, uh, a little more towards Bachelor Street. Okay, and towards the hayfield. Whoop! Whoop! <laughs> Stop right. Yeah, I think that'll work. Good. Yeah. So hold on, before you clamp that down. Uh huh. We had to clamp this because as soon as you start to put pressure on that, it's going to start to move. It's going to start to move it back. Actually, let's do it on the same patch. Yeah. That one wobbles too. We've been using this glue with all the oak laminations so far on the boat, but the glue that we're working with is called Restorsenol. It's the same stuff they use to make marine grade plywood and airplane propellers. It is much more reliable with oak than epoxy, and we have been very happy and impressed with the results so far. The paint has dried, so it is now time to install the diagonal hull strapping. So right now we're just going to screw the bronze strapping into the notches in the back rabbit, 
and they're just gonna set and be clamped into these grooves on the frames. And then once we get to that point in planking, the planking fasteners will go through the plank, through the bronze, through the frame, and tie everything together. But right now they're just gonna get clamped until the planks get that high. So now we all have to do is put them in place, drill through the wood, uh, pull the bronze straps back out, put in a little bit of dolphinite, and put the screws in and final fasten them.